All right, guys, it is time to compare two of my favorite phones. Uh, one in particular, which I really use a lot every day. I really like this phone. Um, this is the HTC U Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S8 compared side by side. So starting with build quality and design, like I always do, um, you know, this is just kind of one of those things that is always subjective, whether a person likes it or not. Um, so this is the new, this is a new direction that some OEMs might be going with this 18 by nine ratio. And geez, the LG G6 was done first like that. And then Samsung followed with the 18.5 by nine body ratio, uh, taking this phone to just this weird ratio uh, for screen. And, and it makes the phone a lot smaller and narrower and longer due to the fact that they actually curve the screen on both sides on this one, so it looks even skinnier. This phone is a 5.8 inch and this is a 5.7 with the addition of a secondary display. So build quality on these, you, as far as what they have, this, they both have a fingerprint reader. This one's waterproof with wireless charging and an iris scanner. This one has boom sound, dual speakers, uh, and it has a secondary uh, display up there. Uh, you know, they both have a fingerprint reader. This one has a heart rate monitor. Uh, think of any other physical features that are different here. No headphone jack on this one. This one has a headphone jack. They both have a card slot, SD card slot. So those are some of the different hardware features that they have. And this one has more, more hardware features. It has an iris scanner, it's waterproof. It has a headphone jack and it has a wireless charging on board. This one uh, doesn't have any of those features. So you'll decide which ones, which things are important to you and, and which is a necessity for you. Uh, wireless charging, I don't use and waterproofing is a bonus. The iris scanner, I've actually been loving the iris scanner. It's, it's boss move because for the first time, a fingerprint reader on the back is not what I prefer on a phone. You guys know I prefer a, a rear mounted fingerprint reader when I can get one. Uh, and this one just is not very good for usage for me at this point. So I've been rocking with the iris scanner nearly on every unlock. So uh, build quality wise, I like them both because they both offer something different. This may be a 5.8 inch display, but it's a small 5.8 inch display. This definitely has a lot more real estate and it's a little more natural watching on a bigger screen. I mean, you can't, even though this is a 5.7, it's a 5.8, just the way it looks, the wideness and the flats, it looks great. And on here, you get the same great quality. It's just at a more slim down look. It's kind of a, one of those things you gotta experience and watch a bunch of videos on Netflix and YouTube and you'll see what I mean. But they both, as far as build quality goes, I like them both. Uh, and I don't really I, I, I don't really have one that I like better than the other. This one is obviously a little bit more compact in size So I will give the edge to the Galaxy S8 for that reason uh, Because this is a big phone regardless if it has a 5.7 This is the same size as some six inch phones and a lot of people might not like that um, Screen quality They're both great um, I, I don't have a preference on which one I think is uh, better than the other uh, they both claim to have some type of good technology behind them and um, you know they're both good uh, I don't I don't really see one being that much better than the other uh, because that's kind of subjective if I try to tell you that one's better over the camera than the other sometimes it's very apparent but with both of these uh, it's not really a, that that noticeable to me I, I like them both as you can see I, I have phones set up exactly the same and through the lens of the, the uh, Galaxy S7 that I'm recording with, you tell me which one you think looks great or whatever, or which you prefer. I like them both. Uh, I spoke of speaker quality earlier. You know, this has a single bottom firing speaker, but I'm gonna tell you, Samsung did a great job with this waterproof phone this time. The speaker is actually really solid. I, I really like it, man. I don't, I don't have any complaints about it. Uh, it's loud enough for me, but it's definitely not as loud as the boom sound on the HTC U Ultra. It's just kind of a no brainer. You get a a speaker through the earpiece and then you get another one on the bottom so that's it's gonna win you know it's, it's a lot louder not because it has uh dual speakers it's the boom sound effect is really good on there so uh features on here i'll start with the hcc u ultra now the only real noticeable features that you have for this phone is the secondary display and i notice i said noticeable they both have some kind of gestures and things like that but a lot of people that i know don't use gestures on phones they like to go and physically do something so with this phone you have the secondary display, which you can customize to anything. You can pretty much put, um, they have a separate um, a separate option for it. You can customize this thing however you want. I just leave my, my uh, uh, tag up there, smartphone conversations, 
but there's lots of different things you can do with this actual display on the top. You can add weather, upcoming events, contacts, music player, uh, apps. It's really, really a solid uh, option uh, for people who have the HTCU Ultra. Um, and, and as far as any kind of special, you know, they both have 7.0 functionality. Uh, but as far as anything other than that, it's kind of special features besides that, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, but with this phone, you have um, the 7.0 functionality. And what else do you have as far as features go? I don't, uh, here's it, here we go. Uh, you've got this one-handed smart stay. You've got the gaming enhancement. So you, you got the enhancement for the um, video playback. Uh, they have that. Uh, you can double click the uh, power button for the camera. Just they all they all have those kind of gestures, you know, so uh, I don't I don't find that one is that much more feature rich than the other, I guess I want to say in my personal usage. Uh, but a lot of these functions, as you can see, I haven't turned off because I don't use my phones like that. So, you know, I'll leave that up to you to whether you decide uh, this definitely has more physical functionality uh, than the HTC Ultra for sure. And I've already went over those things, but. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether or not you use gestures a lot and things like that. I personally don't, uh, but you know, they both have their their pluses and minuses, and you know, they're both good in their own way. I guess I want to say, uh, camera quality. I'll I'll let you see some camera quality right now. I'll pause, then I'll come back, and so go ahead and check out this camera quality. Is a uh, video sample from the Samsung Galaxy S8. Very impressive. This camera right here, uh, some people said this had like a jelloing effect. Um, when I looked on the computer, I, I kind of saw what they meant, but I, I think it looks fantastic. I think this is beautiful. This is just a beautiful, beautiful uh, camera. How far can I zoom in on that plane up there? Where'd it go? Can I get it? Oh, there it is. Look at Sammy shining. Look at that. Woohoo! Alright. Here's the sample. Let's switch devices. Alright, now here we are with the HCC U Ultra. This is the rear camera. I think this camera produces the colors uh, very accurately. Really like it. Can't zoom in on the plane for this one because the plane's gone. <laughs> Can't catch a couple cars riding by. People staring at me. I'm out here in my pajamas. <laughs> and I have my, my night, my lounge gear. Yeah. All right. Real quick, real simple. The HTC U Ultra has uh, 3D audios, but you need to plug in your headphones. But even so, it has a microphone on all sides of the phone, so uh, it really picks up the wind. The noise cancellation is a little different on the HTC U Ultra. Not as good as I thought it would be, but it's still there. All right, guys, here is the front camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8. I'm going to be comparing it to this camera right here, and we'll see the difference in quality and how Samsung produces this red shirt I have on compared to the way... HCC produces it. <laughs> Let's switch cameras. Alright, so here is the uh, HCC U Ultra's front camera. You can see how it produces the red uh, in my shirt. You can kind of see how it, how it takes care of the image processing as well. Um, now, I've already um, done a camera battle on both of these phones, but this part is just for the full review from each one. So, what do you think? Here is the S8. Let's jump back out of here. All right, so what did you think about that? those videos that I just put up? You tell me what you think about the quality. I personally think, and I've said it before, that the HTC U Ultra's front camera dominates the Galaxy S8's uh, front camera. I've, I've um, already got a separate video of that, and I'll remember to try to link it down below. Uh, but, um, you know, I think the cameras on the front are better uh, on the HTC U Ultra, and I think on the rear, um, Samsung's cameras tend to oversaturate everything, uh, but, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those, it's a preference. Some people prefer that oversaturated look and some people don't, and that's just what it is. 
Uh, but as far as just flat out noticeability, I, I think anyone can notice that the HTC Ultra's front camera really dominates the Samsung front camera. Uh, so software wise, I'm running Nova Launcher on both. Uh, and the reason that I'm running Nova Launcher on Samsung's device, because it looks cool, <laughs> obviously, but um, you know, Grace UI used to be one of my favorite UIs. And you know, it's a love-hate relationship. Some days I love it, some days I hate it. Uh, but I don't have to run uh, Nova Launcher on either one of these technically, but in their native form, Sense UI runs uh, circles around uh, Grace UI to me. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think Grace UI is nice, it's sleek, but there is lag here and there. Um, I haven't experienced any lag lately, but when I go into apps, it might do it now. I don't know. Like when I go into apps and scroll through here, see how long that's taking to load up? See? And then when you get it, it's a little bit of, little bit of stutter there. So you can kind of see. Uh, now if I do it over here. You can kind of see the difference there. It took a second to load up, but not as long as here. Uh, but those are, now the reason I'm using that for an example, and you might say, well, nobody does that. Well, people do go into apps. I go in there a lot, several times during the day. I'm always, uh, for some reason, I'm always having to do something in apps. And I noticed the lag in the Samsung device, no matter any of our, if I cleared out everything, like right now, there's probably nothing going but, this, but that. Yeah, and I even had the secondary spell here. So even with that, you know, for some reason, in that area of the phone, TouchWiz is lag, or excuse me, Grace UI has a little bit of lag issue. So I'm gonna have to do two parts to this video, but nonetheless, um, uh, you know, the software is it, it could be considered, you know, performance could be cons considered subjective. And I, I feel like you know. Grace UI still needs improvements. I don't know, uh, shout out to Otech, he said in his last video, his live streaming, so you know it is better than TouchWiz initially started off. Yes, he's right, it, it, the, the operating system has grown. Uh, but performance wise, I don't see myself um, liking the performance any better on the Snapdragon 835 than the Snapdragon uh, 821. I just don't see it, you know, I don't see the efficiency that I wanted to see for battery also. I'm gonna go to battery next. But performance, this isn't a slouch. I'm just saying in certain areas in my experience, as I just demoed there, uh, and you do it on your phone. Do it on, if you have both of these or if you have this one, do it on your phone. Just go into apps and see if it stutters like that for you. And be honest, I can't see what you're doing, but be honest and tell me in the comments, does your phone lag in that area? Because if it does, that just means it's something in Grace UI is, is probably pulling more resources for that particular functionality, I don't know. Uh, but you know, performance overall on both are good but I think Sense UI performs better uh, overall. I don't have, I've never had a problem with, with the HTC Ultra software. I, I just haven't had a problem with it. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you're not, you know, you think it performs better. I'd especially like to talk to people who have both phones. It's easy for one party to say that something's better than the other one when they don't have the other, other product. So if you have this phone, it's kind of not, you can comment on this phone, but if you like physically have not been using it for a month or so, or just using it at all, it's kind of difficult to take that statement serious. So if you have, and there's people that actually have both of these and they could they can say which is which, but if you're just using this phone, you can't say this phone is trash because, oh, it's price is 750 and they don't have waterproof. That's all, that's all just an opinion, so. With, with that, you know, you, you kind of weigh out your, you know, go play with both of them if you can. This is a phone that you can't get. Uh, this is an unlocked phone and this can be found on carriers everywhere. So, um, nonetheless, performance in my experience, this one performs a little bit better. Uh, battery life is definitely intriguing to me because when I first started off with this phone right here, uh, I was getting probably about the same I'm getting as this. Now I have been using this phone longer. There has been an update on this one and there's an update on this one just to fix some stupid red tint thing that everybody complained about. I, I don't see that. You know, some people just look for things. <laughs> it just takes for one person or 10 people to report something and it just scours through the internet and people go crazy. However, if that did happen to you, respect. I'm not saying, you know, it's just not an issue for me. I'm just not looking for red red tint and things like that. Uh, on my on my phone, I'm just using it, man. If I come across something like that, it probably wouldn't even bother me too much. But software updates have happened for both, and um, 
when I first started using this phone, I was getting like five hours of screen on time. Now I'm getting well over that, like more like six and some change. And with this phone, the way I was able to achieve five hours on this phone, I think I got five hours and 45 minutes is the max I was able to get. I did leave it at Quad HD, I will admit. I didn't put it to 1080p. I got five hours and 48 minutes, I think it was. I have screenshots, but I'm kind of saving that for the review process. But I, um, I've, I got five hours and 48 minutes, I think, it was a set at Quad HD display. And um, I had a black theme completely throughout the whole phone. I had a black wallpaper. I have this um, um, embossed uh, icon pack going. I just, had, I just kept a black theme on it for that cycle and it worked out perfectly fine. I was able to leave it at Quad HD. It's still set to Quad HD right now, uh, which is where I, I kind of leave it. As you can see there, 1440. Um, so I was able to get that. Uh, with this phone, you don't get the option to dumb down the screen to 720p and i'm pretty sure if i dumb it down to 720 i've actually done it at 1080p and i've actually was only able to get about the same so i don't know if those settings are actually even really that accurate i guess you know because i put this phone to 1080p and did did two cycles like two days or you know i basically used it for it actually turned out to be about three and a half days total at 1080p uh for two battery cycles and so I was able to get over a day or whatever with this phone set at 1080p. I haven't tested the 720p because I'm just really not interested in doing that because I want to be able to watch videos at you know the highest um, quality I can. But I'm pretty sure I can get better battery with it set to 720p. But then when I go into the settings for the battery and I go down to um, uh, turning it here, when I put it to max, obviously I'm going to get fantastic battery, but I'm not going to get the functionality of all the applications. So if you do it there, you lose the functionality, uh, but if you do it just in the display settings, it'll save you some battery for sure. If you put it to 1080p right here, it'll definitely save you some battery if you're running like a black theme. So I keep it at Quad HD, but I run a black theme and I get much better battery out of this with, at Quad HD. So price wise, technically these are both priced at 750, so that's an equal wash there. Although you can't find this phone for uh, $600. The HTC was actually had it on sale for $599, and you can probably find it for $600 or less right now, which I definitely will recommend this phone. This being Samsung's latest offering, HTC does have a phone coming out that's gonna compete with this phone. It's gonna be equally matched with this phone, same processor and internals and things like that. So I'll definitely be able to bring you a comparison on that in the future. May 16th, tune in to HTC's uh, event for that uh, to, to see what HTC is offering because it's gonna be a lot smaller phone. And it's gonna be a direct competitor for the Galaxy S8 and I definitely plan on bringing that phone to the channel to battle this phone. So I don't think that um, comparing these phones is um, off. Some people might say, well, why didn't you use the Plus? Well, this is a better fit, you know, I think, you know, because these are priced the same and they're pretty much spec the same. Internally, they both have 64 gigs or four gigs of RAM, but I don't see any difference in performance from the 821 to the 835. I just don't see the difference in performance. And in fact, like I said before, Sense performs better than Grace UI in my experience. And so you tell me what you think. So hope you guys enjoyed. It's your man, Jay Will. Just a quick battle here with two great phones. Um, I feel like they're, they're great phones. Pardon the light. I got the LED up there. Uh, but it's your man, Jay Will. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.